our last speaker will be Lucius Caviola. He's going to speak about against naive effective altruism. I'm very keen to hear what he has to say. Uh, Lucius is one of the co-founders of the Effective Altruism Foundation and he has studied psychology in Basel and also at the University of Oxford where he is uh, currently uh, doing research and doing his PhD. Um, his research topics are cognitive and moral psychology and he is at the Department for Experimental Psychology but also at the Center for Practical Ethics at the University of Oxford. I'm very happy he's here today. Lucius, the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. So in this talk, I would like to argue that effective altruism, despite obviously having a huge positive impact on the world, also poses some dangers by allowing for the possibility to be misinterpreted or to be applied in a naive or in an unreflective way. And I think, and I think that such a, an unreflective application of EA can sometimes lead to mistakes which we should try to avoid. So I will first explain in a bit more detail what exactly my argument is and what the explanation for it is, and then I will focus on three types of mistakes, uh, which are a disregard of interpersonal values, bad life choices, or unbalanced views. So the underlying principle of EA is really simple, doing the most good using reason and evidence. And I'm sure everybody here in this room agrees that this is a good idea and that following this principle is going to improve the world and not make it worse. And it's difficult to imagine how applying this principle can lead to bad, uh, to bad outcomes. And let me make it clear, I don't believe that following this principle in general creates a lot of bad outcomes. Overall, of course, um, the world would be much better if everybody were to follow this principle. But I'm just saying that sometimes when we're trying to explicitly follow this principle, sometimes, in some cases, maybe for some people, we can make mistakes, maybe even systematic mistakes, in which case we can refer to these mistakes as biases. Okay, so why is this? There might be many reasons for why this is, but the main reason I want to focus on in this talk is that I believe that certain methods or theories, theories of rationality or morality that are associated with EA, that uh, following these theories uh, in an explicit attempt can sometimes result in mistakes. And these are theories such as expected value theory, Bayesian probability theory, or utilitarianism. And what's interesting about these theories is that they are all really simple theories, like we can define them in a very simple way, but applying them in the real world, actually implementing them, is extremely difficult because they require a huge amount of computational resources. And now, if we were perfect AIs with unlimited computing power and no cognitive biases, everything would be fine. But of course, we're not perfect AIs. We are humans, and we are basically running on corrupted hardware. We have brains that are far from optimal, and we have very limited computing power, and we have a lot of cognitive biases which uh, lead us to make mistakes in thinking and deciding. And because of this, applying these theories can easily result in mistakes, I believe. And what I'm saying is almost a bit paradoxical, because I'm saying that sometimes new knowledge about rationality can lead, in some cases, to worse decisions than not knowing about this particular piece of information about rationality. But of course, overall, just to really emphasize this, I believe that following these theories overall is, of course, much better than not following them, and it, they help us to make much better decisions in general, but sometimes maybe we go wrong uh, in cases where we maybe counterfactually wouldn't go wrong. And being aware of these mistakes is important because then we can try to avoid them, and by doing so, we're actually better at actually approximating these theories. So the first type of mistakes I want to focus on is a disregard of interpersonal values. So I don't really think that this is a particular problem in EA, because my impression is that EAs usually are all really friendly and kind, but um, I do think that at least really an unreflective application of EA can, at least in theory, 
maybe sometimes in practice, lead to such mistakes. Um, more specifically, I think that such a naive interpretation of EA can maybe lead people to believe that um, they can disregard important interpersonal uh, values or virtues or break social rules, um, for example, honesty, integrity, friendship, kindness, because they might think, oh, that's not really important because uh, the only thing that's important is to donate as much money as possible to a give well charity, and therefore it doesn't really matter uh, whether I'm kind or not to, pe to the people around me. And yeah, it might lead people to steal or to, to lie, to save money, to donate it. And of course, I think it's clear that this is really not a good idea because it will result in you being perceived as, as rude, as unfriendly, as untrustworthy, and not just you, but it will reflect badly on the whole EA movement. And that's really not a good idea. So what are the sources of these mistakes? I would say that the main source is short-sightedness, just not really taking into account the long-term consequences and um, unintended consequences of your behavior. And in particular, not taking into account the fact that other people will just realize and um, yeah, that, that they will perceive you in a bad way. And furthermore, or maybe in addition to this point, I think that yeah, maybe it's also a mistake to not integrate important values of other, of non-utilitarian or non-consequentialist theories. Um, but yeah, that's of course a, a difficult moral question, but I think uh, that it might make sense to take such um, other non-consequentialist values into account. Let me briefly talk about instrumental harm, which is an interesting aspect of utilitarianism. And I'm sure you've heard of the trolley problem, which is a famous thought experiment in which the question is whether we should um, harm one person to save many. And this has received a lot of attention, uh, in particular in moral psychology over the last decade. And it is often being used as a measure of so-called utilitarian thinking in the general public. But um, yeah, I'm not sure whether this is actually a good measure. And uh, together with colleagues of mine uh, at the University of Oxford, we developed, uh, we believe, a better measure of utilitarianism, a utilitarianism scale, which is a measurement instrument that allows us to measure the extent to which people of the general public show utilitarian tendencies or show um, proto-utilitarian intuitions. Because, of course, the general public doesn't really reflect much about moral, moral theory, so these are just some... Uh, really some raw intuitions. And what we found was that there's not just one unique underlying psychological factor which captures the extent to which people are utilitarian, but instead there are many factors. And in particular there are two main factors which are instrumental harm on the one hand and impartial altruism or beneficence on the other hand. And this impartial altruism factor I believe is really central to EA because it actually captures the extent to which you are willing to give away personal resources to help others impartially. So to um, count everyone equally, no matter who they are and where they are and when they are. And of course, this basically, in combination with effectiveness, this basically captures EA. Whereas the instrumental harm factor, I believe, is really not central for EA at all. Um, and there are different reasons for why I believe this. One reason is that I think in real life there are really only rarely cases where it's clearly positive impact uh, to harm one to save many, or in particular cases that where common sense morality would agree. I think there, it's very unlikely that there are many such cases. And furthermore, I think there are also huge reputational costs associated with endorsing this principle. Uh, so we also found that this factor, in, um, instrumental harm, is actually associated with psychopathic tendencies. And, of course, this doesn't mean that everybody who endorses this principle is a psychopath, but people also have some intuition about this, because colleagues of mine also have shown that uh, people perceive others who are willing to harm one to save many um, as less trustworthy, and they're less likely to choose these people as social partners, for example. So I believe that the general conclusion from this line of research, I would say, is that we as EAs, we should really emphasize and focus on this impartial altruism aspect in combination with effectiveness, but we shouldn't focus on instrumental harm. And maybe even if you, in the abstract, agree that this 
is maybe a justified principle per se. Maybe it's just not worth the cost to, to act upon it or even to endorse it. So yeah, maybe as EIs we should just ignore instrumental harm or maybe even disregard it because it's, it's just going to harm our reputation. Okay, so what can we do against these types of mistakes? Well, I think it's quite clear we should really endorse important interpersonal values such as honesty and trustworthiness and friendliness. And we should just be kind to the people around us and we shouldn't push people from footbridges, I think. Okay, so the next type of mistakes are bad life choices. Again, I don't think that EA in general results in lots of bad life choices. But I do think that it at least has the potential for people, in particular people who are really dedicated and enthusiastic about EA, to make hasty decisions that they maybe will regret afterwards, or in the worst case, could even lead to psychological harm. So let me give you some examples. Um, working way too much, I've seen this many times in the EA movement, because people are so dedicated that they work way too much, which of course, in normal people, is not sustainable in the long term. Um, working on something that you really don't enjoy, which I think in usual people, uh, normal people is also not sustainable. Um, giving up your career in an unreflective and way uh, too hasty way. Um, of course, um, it's important to consider major, you know, like career changes, but um, yeah, just be careful that you don't do that in an unreflective way and that you might regret it afterwards. Or giving away all your money uh, too quickly. Um, yeah, I think it's possible that this might happen sometimes, that people give away all their money because they find out about EA and its arguments, and then afterwards they might regret it because they realize, oh, now I gave away all my money and I can't fund my studies anymore. So that was really a mistake. Yeah, and just in general, not allowing yourself to live a normal life. I think we should just not forget that we're human beings and not machines and we need hobbies and families and uh, friends and it's worth to, you know, to invest some money to visit your family or to help out your friends, even though, of course, you, know, you could argue, oh, maybe it's not worth it because I could donate the money to AMF. But if you think in such a uh, framework, I think um, it's just really, it, 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 it's really difficult for you psychologically in the long term and people will also perceive you in a, in a weird way. Okay, so what's the source? What are the sources of these types of mistakes? One source might be over-enthusiasm. And I, I actually remember personally when I first found, uh, found out about EA many years ago, I was so convinced by the arguments and so dedicated to the cause and so overly enthusiastic that I was rethinking all aspects of my life. And I was constantly calculating and thinking, oh, you know, maybe, maybe it's not worth to pay a tip now to this waiter in the restaurant or in the bar because after all I could donate these two dollars to, to a Givewell charity and they could maybe deworm a child. Uh, and of course this is much more important than giving this money to the, the, the waiter. And I agree that in the abstract that's probably a correct way of reasoning. But if you're just a type of person who constantly is thinking in these terms and is constantly calculating, you're just going to go mad after a while. And people will just perceive you as an extremely weird guy and as like a greedy guy and they don't want to hang out with you anymore and um, you can't convince them of, of yeah anymore. Um, <laughs> so that's not a good idea. Um, furthermore, yeah, um, dedication signaling, I think this certainly is the case with lots of people as well in the EA movement. You want to show to others and to yourself that you are really dedicated and you really care. Which of course is like, not per se bad, but it's just dangerous because it, it could drive epistemic or instrumental mistakes. Short-sightedness again, not really taking into account the long-term consequences. In particular, not taking into account your psychology, its needs and its limitations. And yeah, disregard for, for common sense. And I think that in particular in, ca in cases where we have reason to assume that common sense maybe has converged towards a quite optimal solution. So I would argue that for certain issues, you know, when it comes to certain like lifestyle uh, decisions, let's say working hours, it's just um, unlikely that we now will suddenly come up with a new optimal solution that nobody before has come up with because there's been so much trial and error 
And um, so many millions of people have experimented. So that's why I think in such cases, it's often a good heuristic to just follow the common sense standards. Okay, what can we do against these types of mistakes? First, so I don't want to argue that we should be less dedicated. Of course not. We need more people who are more dedicated. But we shouldn't make um, this dedication drive uh, mistakes. And of course, important life decisions, we should make them very carefully. We shouldn't make them in an overly hasty way. We should consult other people. Uh, we should try to take an outside view. Um, we could ask people who are outside the EMU from what they think of this idea. We could ask ourselves what advice we would give ourselves or what our future selves would think of ourselves um, if we were to choose option A or B now. Of course, we need to take into account the fact that we're humans and not machines, and we should take common sense seriously and adopt some moderation. Um, yeah, I can't actually believe that I'm giving this advice because those people who know me very well, they know that I'm not particularly a moderate guy, but I take ideas really seriously and like to take them to their extremes. But maybe now I realized that <laughs> at least in certain domains, it's important to be extremely moderate. So the third type of mistakes are unbalanced views. So I think that EA or certain theories and methods associated with EA can sometimes lead to conclusions which are very extreme, maybe to an extent which is unjustified. Of course, that's not, in, that's not always the case, but I believe that such a pattern might exist. So more specifically, I think that um, the application of certain methods associated with EA can lead to conclusions which are too anti-commonsensical in an unjustified way, or too fragile, um, or you, know, you might reach conclusions which, are, which imply that everything else is unimportant, everybody else is wrong and stupid. Um, or conclusions which are even considered to be unethical by other reasonable value systems or perspectives. <coughs> or conclusions that constantly change because your beliefs um, are, really, are constantly fluctuating way too strongly. So, these are not necessarily all wrong, of course, but um, yeah, my argument is just that maybe there's a bit of bias towards such conclusions. And what are potential sources of these um, patterns? So there might be different ones, but the ones I'm going to focus on are the following three. Sequence thinking, explicit expected value and Bayesian reasoning, and signaling contrarianism. I'll explain them now in a bit more detail. Sequence thinking is a type of thinking, so this is a term which was coined by Holden Karnofsky in a GiveWell post. And it is a type of thinking which, um, in which you just adopt one world model or one perspective based on a certain set of assumptions, and then you just accept these assumptions and um, reason through several steps until you reach the conclusion. And I'm not saying that this type of thinking is wrong per se, but I believe that because of our corrupted hardware, our suboptimal brains, applying such a type of thinking can easily lead to a mistake. Because if you're just wrong about one assumption, or if you make one mistake at a certain step in your reasoning, the whole conclusion might be completely off. Now, yeah, I believe that explicitly trying to follow expected value theory or Bayesian probability theory can also can lead to certain mistakes. And one reason might be that it's very easy to underestimate the huge complexities we face, let's say empirical complexities, for example, when we consider the far future, and just in general underestimate the huge uncertainties that we're facing. And of course, it's really important, it's crucial to take these appropriately into account, because if you don't do that, your calculation might be wrong and the, con the whole conclusion might be wrong as well. Um, I also think that, in particular, expected value theory um, is prone to people um, overestimating the difference in the expected value between different options. So it's, it's just... If you don't really apply expected value theory in a very reflective way, uh, but in a, like, an unreflective, hasty way, you might too quickly believe, oh, this option here is like 
my orders of magnitude more important than everything else, and like I can just totally ignore every but everything else because this here has a way higher expected value. And of course, this might be true sometimes, but um, maybe there's a bias towards thinking that uh, too quickly. Yeah. Furthermore, um, I also think it's possible that we, when we explicitly try to follow expected value theory too quickly in an unreflective way identify Pascalian situations everywhere. So this is a situation where we have an option which has a very small probability but an extremely high expected value uh, because the utility or the value is very high. And again, I don't think that the structure of this uh, type of thinking is necessarily wrong per se, but um, I think that there's maybe a bias towards too quickly seeing such <laughs> scenarios where you don't really appropriately take into account let's say, um, a complementary option, which, option, which um, cancels this option out, or where you don't appropriately take into account the huge uncertainties that we face, which really don't justify to assume that A is more likely than non-A, for example. Um, yeah, furthermore, I think that applying an explicit way, Bayesian, re Bayesian reasoning, can maybe lead to a bias where you too strongly update on new evidence points. And it's correct that we need to update on every single data point, no matter how weak it is. That's what Bayesian probability theory tells us. But the update might be so subtle that it doesn't significantly alter the conclusion. But our more crude way of thinking might not be able to take into account that subtlety. And as a result, uh, we might just um, fluctuate too strongly in our conclusion. And as a result, we might you know, constantly change our strategy in a, in a really silly and unjustified way. The next source is um, signaling contrarianism. So I think this is certainly something that I've seen in the A movement, and I think I have to spice as well to some extent. And the idea is that it just Often, for some people, it just feels really cool to endorse views that are very anti-commonsensical and weird because you, know, you might be perceived as, a, as particularly wise or as a weird guy and maybe you like this, the idea of this. And this, um, this of course, um, can be bad because it might generate a general bias against common sense. So what can we do against this? Maybe the most important thing is that we should really um, be epistemically modest and acknowledge the huge uncertainties that we're facing, uh, both when it comes to empirical question, questions, but maybe also when it comes to moral questions. Because after all, doing the most good, this is a quite underspecified principle, and it's, there are different ways of how you can interpret this, and there are different theories which might fit with that theory um, or with that principle. Therefore, I think it's reasonable for lots of people to um, embrace some moral uncertainty uh, way of thinking. Similarly, I think it's useful to try to integrate many different possible views. So in order to avoid the dangers of this sequence type of thinking that I presented, we could try to follow a cluster type of thinking, which is also a term um, coined by Holden Karnofsky. And the idea of cluster thinking is that we shouldn't just adopt one single worldview with a certain set of assumptions, but many different worldviews or perspectives which are based on different assumptions that are all possible to some extent, and we can maybe weight these views by the plausibility of the assumptions or their robustness. And then we can try to find convergences in their conclusions. And such a conclusion would then be much more robust because even if one perspective turns out to be wrong, lots of other perspectives are still going to support this conclusion. Yeah, and finally, I think it's important to take common sense seriously. There's actually a really interesting blog post on Less Wrong by Nick Beckstead called Common Sense as a Prior. And in this blog post, Nick Beckstead presents a framework uh, which can help us to form accurate beliefs about a certain issue. And his framework suggests that if we're trying to form accurate beliefs about a certain issue, we should try to um, start by asking ourselves what a group of trusted, intelligent people who are trying to form accurate beliefs, what kind of 
conclusions or what beliefs or what epistemic standards these people would adopt and then use this as a prior in order to update on it given new evidence. And I think this is certainly a useful technique to overcome um, you know, biases against common sense. Okay, so now you might ask, okay, but if we are just going to adopt the default or just accept common sense, how can there still be progress? Because, yeah, that's a really good question. And of course, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying we should just always accept common sense. I mean, if this were the case, we wouldn't need EA. The whole point of EA is that it seems that common sense is, in many cases, horribly wrong and... Um, yeah, we need to make uh, progress. So um, what I'm saying is that if a conclusion turns out to be extremely anti-commonsensical or even unethical um, relative to other useful or reasonable views or moral theories, a red flag should be raised. But this doesn't mean that the conclusion is totally off the table now. It just means that we really need to make sure now that the conclusion is correct. Uh, we, we really rigorously need to analyze this. But it might still be correct. So, for example, if we can make a really strong case for it, if the conclusion is robust because lots of different views converge towards it, if there is agreement among experts, or if we have reason to assume that people who disagree might be wrong or biased. I think two good examples are the moral importance of the far future or anti-speciesism. So these are both conclusions that are still quite anti-commonsensical. So people in the general public usually don't agree with these conclusions. But um, it seems that they're pretty robust conclusions because from many different perspectives, even from many different moral theories, uh, we can reach these conclusions. Um, we also have reason to assume, I would say, that lots of people in the general public might be biased against these conclusions because we, for example, know about psychological biases such as scope insensitivity, for example, that help to explain why lots of people might not take the moral importance of um, helping people in the far future into account appropriately. Then on the other hand, there, I think there are examples um, where we can see that they're very fragile. So for example, stealing money to give I mean, maybe we could somehow construct an argument uh, in a clever way which would maybe justify this conclusion, but it seems so obvious that basically all reasonable views and perspectives would agree that this is not a good idea, or they would even say it's not just not a good idea, it's actually a really harmful and unethical idea. And therefore I would say that this conclusion is very fragile and probably sh should not be, uh, or certainly should not be accepted. Yeah, at this point, it's probably also important to, to emphasize that I believe that we should remain very open to new ideas, um, as has been the case in EA anyway. We should really encourage the discussion of any idea or consideration, no matter how weird and anti-commonsensical or strange it might appear, uh, because this really you know, helps to make progress. But whether these considerations are actually going to alter our conclusion that's a different question. But sometimes they do in a justified way, and I think in this case we really make, we're really making progress. And I think furthermore, we can even um, ensure that certain ideas or certain new conclusions um, become the common sense after a while. So I think maybe this has happened with AI, the importance of AI safety, this has been an issue which was very anti-commonsensical just 10 years ago, uh, but it's just a very robust conclusion, and now, today I would say this topic is it's much less anti-commonsensical, and certainly also to some extent, thanks to the EI movement and to you know, the book by Nick Bostrom and uh, public intellectuals who have endorsed this important idea. Yeah, and hopefully we as EIs can continue to push the boundaries forward of what is considered to be commonsensical or not. Okay, so the conclusion of my talk is that doing the most good by using recent evidence is a really simple idea, but actually implying it in the real world is extremely difficult, and it's so difficult that sometimes we can go wrong, and we should be aware of these biases and these mistakes that we can make uh, in order to avoid them. Thank you for listening.